So, I once was called upon as a seminary intern placed in a congregation to preach. And the text for the assigned day, although the text isn't why that day was chosen, it was just for the date, but the text for the assigned day had Jesus entering the temple, seeing uh, things being sold there, in anger, uh, turning over, churning the tables of the money changers. And so the sermon that I prepared, the sermon that I wrote, uh, was all about turning over a new leaf. Get it? That was the name of it. That's what I kept talking about. I told table stories and like falling tables and, and it was called turning over a new leaf. Turning over a new leaf. Get it? Money changers had tables. Tables have leaves. Uh, it's a cliche that we use, and God is a saving God who calls us to turn over a new leaf, and sometimes does so kind of forcefully. That's what the sermon was about. And I have to tell you that when I did this whole turning over a new leaf, it turns out that that is a really bad pun, and that it is not heavy enough to carry the weight of a whole sermon. Uh, every time I kept doing that turning over a new leaf, it was like crickets, probably like the sound. Uh, that you have right now going on, like, what a terrible pun, right? Good morning, good afternoon, welcome to Preparing for Sunday, where you and I take a preview look together, and hopefully in the Holy Spirit, at the upcoming scripture text for our next gathering, our next worship opportunity. This is for Sunday, January 22nd, 2023. This is for the third Sunday after Epiphany. The text is a jump back to Matthew. We are in the year of Matthew, and after a quick interruption by John, we jump back to Matthew 4, verses 12 through 23. And this is a time to look at those verses together. Uh, as a step back, as a perspective, as a view of the lectionary itself, uh, I'll draw to mind last week's scripture that had to do with John the Baptist. It had to do with Jesus calling or, or be, being followed by disciples. And that is as John, the Gospel of John, delivers that story. And in the Gospel of John, it sounds as if the disciples were first John the Baptist disciples, and that Jesus ran into him when he went to get his baptism, and that they saw by John pointing to someone greater, that they were meant to follow John, but then take off and go with Jesus. This week's text is Matthew's account of Jesus calling people and John the Baptist figures in it. It spurs this impetus to action that Jesus follows, but it isn't the same, and it sounds like Jesus calls these people out of nowhere. And so for one minute, based on last week's interruption and this week's return to Matthew, I'll talk to you about the beauty of Scripture that it's based on a very rich, complex, and deep history, and that it's based on a lot of different perspectives, God-given perspectives and stories and ideas of what that history and, and what these stories mean for our lives. That's what preparing for Sunday is, that's what preaching is. It's about the depth of this and a dive into it. By being in Matthew a couple weeks ago and being in the year of Matthew, being interrupted by John, and now returning to Matthew, we get a lot of the texture of the story of Jesus. Jesus was surely followed by a lot of people in his time. He was a, well, he was God walking the earth. He was healing people. He drew people to himself. Some of those might have come from John. Some of those might have come from random drawings, which means that no matter who we are, there is a place for us in this story. Whether we're from a different church and we're at a new one, whether we're off the street, uh, we could slot into this story in any place because it's rich and it has that kind of depth and through it, God can absorb just about anyone. Now, one of the things that I wanna think about or draw your attention to in this text though, moves away from John and moves into Matthew, which is good because we're in Matthew. It's this word withdrawal, Jesus withdrew. So you'll see that early in Matthew 4, 12 through 23. John the Baptist uh, is arrested, and that causes Jesus to withdraw. That word and this idea is a Matthew word and a Matthew idea. This word occurs 10 times in the Gospel of Matthew, and really only there, this, this idea of Jesus withdrawing. 
And this is going to play heavily in this week's sermon. This is a pretty heavy uh, influence of this week's sermon. The idea of uh, uh, not responding in kind, but sometimes taking a moment for yourself apart to, to be prayerful, for God to work on your soul before you worry about how you're going to act. So Jesus himself withdraws and sort of settles into allowing God to speak. This word happens 10 times in Matthew. It's a Matthew word, this withdrawing. Every time it happens after something tumultuous, after something difficult, and Jesus withdraws, his baseline, his center, his soul is worked on. And then the story progresses, or where it goes from there comes from out of that. And that is a heavy influence for this week's sermon, uh, the idea of withdrawing first, how Math Matthian, Matthew uh, uses this word a lot, and how this appears 10 times and only really there is a pretty big influence on me this week, so I pointed it out uh, here in this uh, preparing. I also want to talk some about the travel that comes out of the withdrawal. So Jesus withdraws, God speaks to Jesus' baseline, who Jesus is, and then the path is undertaken. It's a road. And specifically, there is an Old Testament quote happening here. Matthew is the Jewish gospel, so it likes to take snippets of the Old Testament and reframe them in the story of Jesus. Matthew does this more than any gospel. And what we're getting here is this thing about this road that Jesus is walking on. Knowing the danger of where he is, having withdrawn, having had God speak to him, he feels led to continue his work, but to do so maybe a little separate from where he is. Maybe his time isn't uh, there yet. The story isn't rich enough for him uh, to face John's future. Uh, and so he hits the road. And the road here, based especially on this Old Testament quote, is uh, something that has archaeological, has real-life significance. The road is very, very likely uh, the road, an ancient road called the Via Maris. Via Maris. And you can Google that. You can find a Wikipedia article on the significance of this road. Via, V-I-A, which is way, road. It's a, it's a way of naming roads in, in the ancient world. The way, V-I-A, via. Maris, M-A-R-I-S. And you can Google this and you'll find a lot of background if you're a historical kind of person. Uh, essentially, it is probably the prime trade route from Egypt in the south to Syria and points north, okay? And it's likely that because of this quote and because it's Jesus moving from where he is to where the story tells us he's going, that Jesus is on this road. It's a very busy cosmopolitan road Jesus has gone from a time of withdrawal and fear to almost like hiding in numbers here. And along the way, he's meeting this eclectic group. And that group, because of the way that this is a story with this rich context, is a group that includes you and I. It's a trade road. It's by the sea. He can collect fishers bringing their, uh, you know, their wares, their catches to shop. Uh, and he can speak in this sort of terrible pun. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. That's a terrible pun, like my turning over a new table pun. I am not sure it carries enough weight to be a sermon anymore. So we, we have all sorts of songs about fishers of men, uh, and we have all sorts of knowledge of this story, but I don't know that we would use this pun in everyday life anymore. Only in church do we ever talk about this. It really has very little bearing or connection to, to the world we actually live in. And so I kind of steer away from this fishers of men stuff. The sermon really isn't about that because it, it, it's kind of, to me, uh, something of a, of a lost or diminutive or kind of out there pun that maybe doesn't quite fit. Uh, I would have to call me a talker of men or, you know, something that actually fits more where we're at in life. A video watcher of men. Uh, you know, and, and these, these all have problems trying to connect that to what Jesus is doing. Uh, I've given you some background here of them being on the road and how cosmopolitan it is, where Jesus is coming from, where he's going to, why he's coming from and going to that place. Um, this is uh, a sort of movement of God's grace, of God's care. We don't always know 
what the story is going to take us into, where the road is going to lead, but it isn't really about that. And that's really the theme for this week's sermon. It isn't about making the, the destination happen. It's much more about being who God calls us to be, that withdrawal and willingness to call and to be called. So I don't really talk much about fishers of men anymore, uh, but this is about uh, discipleship. It's about who you are and about what that looks like. Uh, it's based on your identity, but it takes you into a place, onto a road that you may or may not know. It takes you into a story that parts of you may fit or may not. It's uh, a little bit of letting yourself be in God's hands and out of your own control, all right? So this week calls us to look past the jumping around, Matthew, a couple weeks ago, John, one week ago, now back to Matthew. It calls us to look beyond maybe trying to put all the pieces together because it's a sewn together patchwork thing with a lot of depth that we may not get. It calls us to look past the bad pun here, fishers of men, and I know Jesus is using the pun, and obviously it's pretty timeless because we're still talking about it. It's better than my flipping over tables pun, but it's still something of a lost pun, if you will, all right? So it calls us past our common view of this story, that it's just a church story, that it's like just some fun thing that we break out every now and then because it sounds cool and we do it in church and we've always done it. And it calls us into faithful, and maybe more importantly, adventurous uh, roads and to allow ourselves to be spoken to as a soul that withdraws and God invests time in, and to allow ourselves to be uh, in the hands of God, uh, maybe more than in our own hands. Uh, this is a call this week to live as who God made you instead of to live as the person who we're all the time trying to show people we are. You know, in the social media world, we're constantly trying to put like, hey, hey look how cool we are, uh, or look how much we've done. Uh, this is much more about faithfulness. It's more about cold, steel reality of who you are and that who you are is enough. This is a message we've heard before, uh, that God values us and God can use us no matter how broken or how much we understand or how bad the puns are. This is a story we hear all the time but it's a story that we need reminded of often because we have this bad habit of doing the fishing instead of just living into the story about what it means to be approached by God and told we're important. All right, so that's preparing for Sunday. Uh, if you would like, you can Google Via Morris. There's more depth there of historical nature if you're interested in that. Um, you can look at last week's call to disciples in John that bounces back and forth and how that looks different. Um, you can even come up with your own bad puns for how the world works. You can do this however you want, uh, but more importantly, uh, it's the idea that you and I had the opportunity to sit in God's Word, and I hope you know that it's not so much about the answers or the final product here, it's much more about God saying that I am worth it and you are worth it, all right? That is a good enough reason to stay safe. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Uh, and I look forward to that opportunity when we have it. So please do stay safe, take it easy, and I'll see you soon.